wow, so much has happened. Um, let's talk about it. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Emmy, and today I want to talk to you about Crown of Midnight. This is the second book that I read in the Throne of Glass series. And if you're watching this video, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that you've already read the series or you're interested to see what I'm going to talk about. Towards the end of the video, there will be some spoilers and I'll be giving you a time to make sure that you can just skip right through that. As usual, in the beginning, I kind of just want to talk to you about my general experience with reading the book. I want to talk to you about some of the characters and how they have potentially developed from the first book. And then we'll get into more of the plot discussions. Hope you enjoy the rest. My initial thought with reading this book was let me be patient. Let me be patient until we get this action because we already know how Sarah J Maas is with her writing. And of course, of course, we get to that part where we are in the last 100 to 150 pages of the book and then bam, things are happening. Okay. It was like a can of worms. Although the writing style is generally the same from how she always writes in these novels, I really appreciate it because it is thoughtfully written. It is intentional with how all of these pieces come together. And I think she just does a beautiful job with keeping us hooked throughout the series. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but that book guy here on YouTube did say that Sarah J Maas creates gateway fantasy novels. There are, I'm sure, different levels of fantasy readers. And I would say that I'm like middle tier at this point. I wouldn't say like I'm at a proficient tier or expert or anything by any means. I will say that this series certainly deserves the title of being a good gateway fantasy novel because it has all of the introductory elements that a good fantasy book might have and the world building and the characters and powers, what have you. But there are going to be some things that you could just overlook a little bit, but I'm sure it will be uncovered as we continue on in the series. And I'm sure everything that she does is intentional. From where the first book has finished, Selena was competing to be the king's champion. In this novel, she is already the king's champion. So as the royal assassin serving the king, I was really curious to see how she's going to navigate her responsibilities with serving the king, but also respecting herself as Selena Serdothian because she was truly impacted by the King of Adderland's reign for the last 10 years. So I know that there's a, a little bit of like, you know, serving the King, but then also making sure that you're not losing yourself along the process. Kind of like a lot of our jobs, you know, you're serving your boss and then you kind of like lose yourself in the moment. We're just like Selena. <laughs> Okay, so now I want to talk to you about some of the characters in this story because ooh, have things changed, right? Let's start with Selena. Selena, this whole time, wow, amazing. Give her her Emmy right now because this whole time, this whole time I was questioning Nehemiah. Who would have thought? Now, I did mention that I was kind of questioning where Selena's loyalties would lie because, you know, once she has won this competition and has become the royal assassin for the king, is she truly gonna serve him? Is she gonna stick to her duties and be serious of being a royal assassin? Or is she gonna respect herself? How is she gonna handle this job? How is she gonna handle this position? But good for her. Now let's get to Kale. Ugh. I love him, I feel for him, and I wish him the very best. That's really all I can say right now with Kaol. On the topic of internal conflicts, I think that is just such a major theme in this book or maybe in this series, I have no idea. Kaol being the captain of the guard for the king, he literally has to serve the king. He abandoned his family so he can serve the king and have pride in that. So he's questioning a lot of things right now. His job is to serve the king, but at the same time, he loves Selena, who is someone that is potentially a risk to the kingdom. So what is he gonna do? What is he gonna do? Tough, very, very tough. Next, again, on the topic of internal conflict, we have Dorian, Prince Dorian. Ugh. I also, I also feel for him because Dorian is going through a lot in this book. 
as the heir to the throne and friend of Selena, there's a lot of things that he's grappling with that he's just like, what do I do? I don't know, Dorian kind of falls right in the middle, but because of how he discovered more about himself in this book, which I will talk about in the spoiler section of the video, oh, maybe he's leaning a little bit more towards Selena. We will see. And Nehemiah, I do want to publicly apologize for doubting you. Princess of Elway, Princess Nehemiah, I am so sorry that I ever doubted you. It was me, not you. And again, also, while we're already apologizing to some of the characters that I kind of shamed in the previous video, Calatane Rompierre. Wow, girl. I mean, I don't even know what to tell you. I think you kind of got yourself in a situation just because of, you know, the type of character that you are. But I'm sorry if I was victim blaming. I had no idea what was going on. But I really do wish you the best. And I'm sorry for calling you a sneaky little bitch in the first video. Sorry. Now, we are going to potentially get to spoiler territory. I don't know if I've actually already spoiled some parts, but while we're here, let me actually attempt to do my best to give you a moment to skip through the spoilers and just skip right to this time. Okay? Sorry if I accidentally already spoiled some things, but in this section of the video, we are really going to be spoiling some things, so you might as well skip if you haven't finished the book yet. Okay. Now that it's just you and I on the topic of Caltane, honestly... She, like I said, she brought this upon herself. She wasn't being trustworthy. Now look at her. Okay, now she's a lab experiment. So I don't know where Caltane is. I do believe that she is probably with Roland somewhere. They're both lab experiments because there's something about that ring. I still don't know the significance of that ring. How many more hints are we going to drop until we figure out what this ring is about? Caltane, Roland, the King, and Parrington. Sketch. All sketch. Even Dorian. I don't know. I don't know. There's just something. I, I, I'm wishing Dorian the best, but blood ties you know bad duties responsibility i hope he chooses the right side and also on the topic of ring especially the one that selena is wearing that kale gifted her can we just talk about for a second that i'm happy that she finally sees what's right in front of her which was kale this whole time i mean the broom closet the broom, the broom closet. closet but they are they are hot for each other this again highlights chaos struggles with choosing between his boss and the love of his life it shouldn't be that hard but chaos is a loyal one and that's why they love him but the broom closet <laughs> anyways on the topic of closets and nooks and crannies huh let's talk about the passageways Okay, the passageways, Selena just keeps finding them. At some point with me reading, I was like, has no one else cleaned on this side of the library or like broomed or dusted this part of, I don't know, behind her dresser or something for them to figure out, oh, there's a passageway here. How come she's the only one that keeps finding these? I mean, obviously she's not the only one, but... I'm surprised not more people have discovered this, right? Did you think that too? Like, how was she the only one finding this? Whatever. Anyways, on the topic of passageways and magic, let's talk about more. More is more is something that I don't know why I keep like thinking this and associating more with a hybrid of Olaf from Frozen and Donkey from Shrek because they are good partners in crime. They are good sidekicks or whatever. I mean, I, I don't wanna say sidekicks, but they are great friends, but at the same time, they're not consistent. You know, like Mort could have been really helpful from the very beginning, but he's just like, oh yeah, I forgot. That is kind of like very Olaf and Donkey in a hybrid stuck to a door. That's just what I pictured. Look, Selena finally makes peace with her true destiny and embraces the fact that magic still does exist. She has responsibilities that was placed upon her by the queen, Queen Elena. She's like, why me? Find somebody else. Get somebody else to do it. That's what Selena is going through right now, but she's made peace with it. All it took was her best friend dying. Their last words exchanged to each other were fighting words. Coward being one of them, ouch. And her situationship slash boyfriend Kaol lying to her. So yeah, assassination mode is activated and we're absolutely here for it. She's focused, she's determined, she's running through these streets at a really, really fast pace. Hello, 
and she's teamed up with Dorian. And on the topic of Dorian, he's a big question mark, is he not? On page 207, chapter 25, there was a really, really short chapter, and I don't know if you caught that, but it was Princess and Queen. They didn't even mention what names, but they said Princess and Queen were talking amongst each other, talking about one of them has to break. And then later on in this very, very short chapter, someone said, but the prince isn't ready yet. What do you mean? How does he even have magic? Truthfully, I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm happy that he has magic. But yeah, honestly, he's just like such a big question mark. That's why I put him in there with a category of Caltain, Roland, the King, Parrington, and Dorian. I don't trust none of them. Because why? Rebellion and betrayal. A common theme in fantasy books. If you've read enough, you know that betrayals happen all the time. And that's why I question him. I am sorry, I'm not gonna bring her up anymore. But if we're gonna talk about rebellion and betrayal, it's only right that we talk about Archer Finn. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. No, honestly, I, I wasn't. As soon as like the first warning where she was like, you better get out of town and fake your own death, I don't care or I'm gonna kill you myself. As soon as that first warning was given to him and he didn't leave town and gave her a freaking list, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, no, 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 no. He's risking Selena's cover right now. You need to get out, bro, you're messing up my plan. And then on the second time when he was still in town and she didn't kill him, I was like, end him now. I don't even know who I was. I was like, end him. Why is he still here? And then at the end of the book, when it was about to be the third chance, when they were, I think at the sewers, when he was trying to escape and she was gonna let him go, I was like, no, no breaking way. There's absolutely no way. She was just in assassination mode. Reactivate it, charge up again. She was about to walk away, but then when she turned right back around and I was so happy. I really was. I, I thought she was going to let him go, but yeah, the way that that was revealed, that was like, wow, wow, freaking Archer. And speaking of the end, what did we think? Did you see that coming? First of all, let's talk about how Kaol knows. There's no hiding that. I'm Faye. <laughs> Surprise, I need to turn or we will all die. That was honestly a moment that needed silence in that part of the book. I was like, I really don't know like how I expected that to be revealed. Obviously we knew that magic still existed, but even just the way that she revealed it to Kao at the very, very end of the book and we find out her true name, her true identity. I was like, genius. Oh my gosh, how did I miss this? I even went back to the books and to see any kind of hints and it was just done so freaking well, well, well done. Just the delivery, the reveal, everything, it was just wow. As usual, the end is very action packed. We're talking Nehemiah dying, Selena finding out about everything that Archer did, Haltain is out there being a lab experiment somewhere, who knows? Dorian being hot and strong, with magic and Selena is not Selena ma'am SJM she needs to cool it so this brings us to now I need a moment honestly I'm really happy that Assassin's Blade is next because that really was a lot so I'm ready to uncover a little bit more of Selena's history different type of you know pace because so much has happened that I'm like, okay, I need I need a little breather. I need a little intermission. You know what I'm saying? So that's where we are in the book. If you made it this far, thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate your time today. If you'd like to see the next video of the next book, Assassin's Blade, that I'm currently reading, please make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. It always is so appreciated and it really does help me out a lot. So I hope to see you in the next one and bye!